Welcome. Let's take a look at a related rates problem discussing the investigating the distance between two ships. At midnight, ship A is 14 nautical miles due east of ship B. Ship A is sailing east at a rate of 15 knots. A knot is one uh, nautical mile per hour. Ship B is sailing south at a rate of 20 knots. Again, that's a knot is one nautical mile per hour. How fast in knots is the distance between the ships changing at 6 a.m.? So let's go ahead and start with a drawing or a, a sketch. Let's assume that north is upward. Okay, then we have that ship A, your ship A, is 45 nautical miles due east, so A is east of ship B. And it's due east, so that's a horizontal uh, line. So there's ship B, and we know that there are 45 knots apart, nautical miles apart. Now, we know that ship A is continuing to sail east at a rate of 15 knots. So ship A is traveling uh, 15 knots east. And that's a rate. And ship B is sailing south at a rate of 20 knot, knots. So ship B has a rate of 20 knots south. So ship B is traveling this way. Okay. Ship, uh, how fast is the distance? So, how fast is the distance between the ships changing at 6 a.m.? So, 6 a.m. is important to us. So, let's imagine that um, ship B is about here. So, there's ship B and ship A is about here at 6 a.m. So how far has ship B traveled uh, from midnight to 6 a.m.? Well, ship B is traveling at 20 knots, so that's 20 nautical miles per hour. So nautical miles per hour and how many hours did ship B travel at that rate? Well it's from midnight to 6 a.m. so that's for a total of six hours so this is times six hours so between mid midnight and 6 a.m., ship B traveled 120 nautical miles. So this distance here is 120. Now let's do the same thing for ship A. Now ship A, um, we know, uh, traveled at a rate of 15 nautical miles per hour. So 15 nautical miles per hour for six hours. And so that gives us uh, a total of, and that's a total of 90 nautical miles. And that's what was traveled between um, midnight and 6 a.m.
So that is only this segment of our drawing. So this is 90 miles. Notice that ship A was already 45 miles away. So that means that the total distance from where they started at midnight um, to where ship A is now is 135 nautical miles. Okay, so we now know how far both ship, um, ship A has traveled since midnight and how far ship A is from the original position of ship B and how far ship B has traveled. Now keep in mind that the question is asking us about the distance between the two ships. Now the distance between the two ships is this. That line seg uh, that dashed line represents that distance between the two ships. Now, um, and what we want to do is basically find that distance. And I'm going to choose a different variable. Let's call this S. S is the distance between the two ships. So if S is the distance between ship A and ship B, what kind of equation can we uh, create to model this situation? Now, interestingly, because um, uh, ship B went south and ship A went due east, we know that this is a right triangle. And because it's a right triangle, we can go ahead and apply the Pythagorean theorem. However, we do need to be careful. We cannot simply say 120 squared plus 135 squared equals S squared. Because in this problem, the, each of the sides of this right triangle are always changing over time. So what we want to do is we want to look at this from a more generic perspective, recognizing that over time, ship B gets further away from its original position, so side X is constantly changing. Ship A is uh, getting further away from its original position, so side Y is constantly changing. And then the distance between the two ships, S, is also constantly changing. So we want to capture that in our model, which is why we need to, um, in our model, our equation, we need to keep them as variables. So each of those three sides, it's important because they're constantly changing throughout the problem to keep them as variables. So instead of 120 squared plus 135 squared equals S squared, we need to think of this as X squared plus Y squared equals S squared. So with this model in mind, we can start to think about how fast in knots the distance between the ships is changing. Now, with this model in mind, how fast in knots is the distance be between the ships changing? The distance between the ships is S. So we want to find dS dt. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want to find dS dt for x squared plus y squared equals s squared. So let's go ahead and find the derivative, uh, or take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to t. So taking the derivative with respect to t, we will have 2x dx dt 
because x is changing with time, plus 2y dy dt. Again, y is changing with time. And then 2s ds dt, because s is changing with time. Now, what we want to do is we want to find uh, ds dt. This is what we're interested in. Now, we do have some pieces of information. So let's go back to our sketch and identify some key pieces of information. So X represents the path of ship B, and we know that ship B is traveling at a rate of 20 knots. So we know that um, dx dt, or this side of the triangle, is growing at a rate of 20 knots. We also know that at um, the particular moment in time, at 6 a.m., that the length of side x is 120. So we know that x is equal to 120 at 6 a.m., and that dx dt is 20 knots. So let's capture that. So let's make a reminder here that x is 120 and that dx dt is 20. Now let's go see what's going on with y. Now y on our triangle is the path of ship A. And um, y is changing, this side of the triangle is changing because ship A is traveling east at a rate of 15 knots. So dy dt should be 15 knots. Now looking up here at our snapshot at 6 a.m., we can see that at 6 a.m., the length of side y is 135 nautical miles. So let's go ahead and record that. So we know that y is 135 and dy dt is 15 knots. And now we might wonder about s. So let's go back and revisit our picture. Now we know that s is the distance between the two ships. And we're actually trying to find out what ds dt is, so we don't know that. We don't have that information and that's what we're trying to solve. Um, we haven't yet determined S, but we certainly could. Recall that this is a right triangle, and S is the hypotenuse. So while we haven't yet determined uh, the length of side S, we could go ahead and do that now and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of side S. So let's go ahead and do that next. So uh, using the Pythagorean theorem, s squared will be 120 squared plus 135 squared, which means that s is going to be plus or minus the square root of that, so 120 squared plus 135 squared. And with a little bit of investigation of the factoring of that number, we, we can find out that that is equal to 15 squared times 145. So the length of side S potentially could be uh, 15 times the square root of 145. Now, of course, we're talking about the length of a side of a triangle. So we're going to go ahead and use the positive root. So 15 times the square root of 145. Now, as we do that, let's look back over at our equation that is relating all of these rates, our dx dt, our dy dt, and our ds dt. And what I want us to notice is that we have values for each of these unknowns with the exception of ds dt, and that's what we're trying to find. We have a value for x, we have a value for dx dt, we have a value for y, and we have a value for dy dt, and now we have a value for s.
So let's go ahead and substitute in all of those numerical values and then simplify the equation that we end up with. So 2x is going to be 2 times 120 times dx dt, which is 20, plus 2y, and y is 135, times dy dt, which is 15, and that has to equal 2 times s, which is 15 times the square root of 145 ds dt. So let's go ahead and do the arithmetic on the left-hand side of the equation. Um, if we do that, and so for our first term, we get 4,800 plus 4,050 equals, um, that'll be 30 times the square root of 145 times ds dt. And then when I add those, I get 8,850 equals 30 times the square root of 145 ds dt. And now dividing by the coefficient of ds dt, so we get 8850 divided by 30 over the square root of 145 equals ds dt. Now it does turn out that we can simplify the 30 with the 8850 and end up with 295. So we find that ds dt is 295 divided by the square root of uh, 145, 145, uh, knots. And that is approximately equal to uh, 24.50 knots. So now it's time for us to interpret our answer. And so what this is telling us is that the distance between ship A and ship B is increasing at a rate of 295 over the square root of 145, or approximately 24.5 knots, when ship A is traveling east at a rate of 15 knots, and ship B is traveling south at a rate of 6 knots. And something that I should preface this with, with is this is only accurate at 6 a.m. So at 6 a.m., the distance between the two ships. I hope you find this helpful.